So I was uh, working on these kinds of system, biological systems using microbes, different kinds of fungus, bacteria, all this. Uh, and I was in uh, DuPont, um, you know, your non-stick stuff and all the materials that your toothbrush, your bombs, your uh, bulletproof uh, materials, bullets, everything. They make bullets as well as bulletproof. And so. All this, um, that kind of company I was in, uh, Central Research and Development as a scientist. And then I uh, got sick of what I was doing um, because nothing was helping humans. They are only making money for corporations and in the name of science, uh, we are all doing wrong things. I felt when I was very young, um, now I am 62. <laughs> Um, back in 1989-90 itself, I realized that because I met a young girl of six years old who started menstruating at the age of uh, 1987 itself in America. So since then, the whole world, the average age of menstruation for women has come down to eight, nine now all over the world and the human race is still not blinking their eye you know they don't care let it happen just go on and no one seems to bother about this including the so-called Nobel laureates in biochemistry and all these so-called experts of endocrine systems uh, all kinds of doctors you know all big big names big big stuff and uh, Surya calls me I'm bashing everyone I, I don't know whom to bash yet, you know, so everyone is involved, we are all involved in it. And the simple mistake we did was uh, to give the milk of cow to the babies. You are supposed to feed your baby, huh? that's when you get milk, that is meant to go into the mouth of the baby directly, your nipple to the mouth of the baby. And then what have we done in the name of science, genetic engineering and we declared in the books of science, milk, complete food. For whom? Whose milk for whom is food? See, if you have a second baby, the first baby cannot take actually the second baby's milk, though it is same mother, because his milk digesting capacity and the genes get switched off by the age of three or four. So, the same mother's milk, uh, your own son cannot have, if you have another baby, second baby, the second baby's milk is not first baby's milk. I mean, that specific and profound it is. But then, we have now got cows giving milk 365 days. And then you think that's okay and that's a complete food and feed. So that's what happened in America. They did it first by 1987 itself, even before 1987, I think five to ten years ahead of time, they started feeding their babies with this milk. And so before I came back to India, the cows came, the milk has come and the babies in India also started losing their balance. What balance? Hormone balance. That is the problem. So the whole human race embarked on hormone imbalance since then. And uh, there is a big misconception in India, oh cow's milk is sacred, uh, very good, uh, this, that and go puja. Yeah, yeah, you can do puja to go puja, but go who is not giving milk for your baby. It's giving milk for its baby. And the cow calf grows in six months this big. And your baby grows, that's all, in six months. So that means the hormone balance that your body requires, your baby's body requires, is different from cow. So even if it is native cow, desi cow, cow's milk is not meant for you or your baby. Why baby? Now we also want complete food. So people started drinking coffee, tea, as if that is not enough paneer, concentrate the milk 10 times. So 10 liters of milk gives you 1 kilo of paneer. Paneer is very good, protein, 
E12, whey protein, this protein, that protein. See the whole world started because we started consuming things. And then people started going haywire in their balance of the hormones. All women started getting hair on their upper lips. No problem. Beauty parlor. Schedules. Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And then no problem. We have high five laser treatments. You see the fallacy of the whole cycle. And no scientist, no doctor, no universities, no biochemistry departments. Not even one fellow talks about this. No one. What all has to be done is stop drinking milk. Simple. So, I have been telling all my patients over the last 20 years and we have made thousands of families stop drinking milk. Now all these thousands of families have not visited the doctor even once for the last 15 years. That is the source of all our problems. That is one of the most important imbalances the human race has found wantingly in the name of science, in the name of technology. That you have chosen the best food has become the worst by just making money. All this is dairy products. The whole world is running around. And to do that, in the name of coffee and tea and milk, we have devoured the nature. There's nothing left in the mountain regions. Be it Everest, be it Windies, be it Alps, be it Western Ghats. Every nook and corner of all the world's mountains have been invaded by this so-called coffee and tea. The whole world rivers are drying up because you guys are drinking coffee and tea. Nothing else. Nothing else. Along with this milk. And with that, you have got another wonderful product called sugar. This confectionery addiction of these Britishers. Actually, the blame should go to Bengali fellows. Because when these English fellows came, they had the best sweet in the world called palm jaggery. In fact, that is the best sweet even today. And it will remain the best sweet in nature for time immemorial. But these guys didn't have anything. These Britishers didn't have anything. So they came and oh, what a wonderful thing, such a sweet thing. And so they slowly figured out that sugar cane also give sweet. Then the word estate came from this sugar cane agriculture. So wherever there is lodging of water, they started growing sugar cane. And in fact, this laborers, slaves, everything started from that particular thing. Then came rubber estate, then came everything else. So this confectionery, so that's what, this is a Bengal fellows, they were eating good sweets. These guys came and fell for that uh, sweet and then uh, things became worse. So they started this sugar. And sugar is what? Another biggest imbalance that has been created in the human race is a glucose imbalance. And actually glucose runs life. Without glucose, no life form on this planet because that is the first molecule that traps the energy of sun, carbon dioxide and water. Water splits into oxygen and hydrogen. Hydrogen is fixed onto the carbon dioxide and you make glucose. That's what a plant, a leaf does. That's how the energy of sun is trapped. And that transforms itself into different food items. That is your fruits or whatever, everything. And it becomes fructose and then different kinds of 
carbohydrates, everything starts happening once glucose is made. Ragi, wheat, rice, all millets, everything, including oils, all these wonderful oils that we will talk about. It. Oils also coming from glucose only. Everything on this planet, the plants make, starts from carbon dioxide being converted to glucose and then everything gets added up. So, you have nitrogen fixing bacteria in the soil, they fix and the amines come and then amino acids come and then the proteins come, everything is made by plants. But then protein means people are talking about fish, meat, you eat chicken, you eat pig, you eat cow, you eat everything, everything is protein. But real protein is not there, it is in the plants like your moong dal, rajma beans, chana dal, all these are proteinaceous products. So you want protein, you want oils, everything is there in nature, in the plants. The first things are produced by plants. Then animals eat them, then you again divide that, make according to your bodies. So I eat moong dal and horse gram, horse eats. Horse makes its meat. I make my meat. So I cannot eat horse and think that I am going to get meat. So after that also I have to divide, digest, again make my meat. So why eat meat and make yourself more troublesome? So you can directly eat the protein that is available in the plant material like dolls. You still get your pure protein. That is the reason why you should not eat egg, meat and all this because we only need 6% of protein but then this so called doctors, so called scientists started telling you need lot of protein 24%, 13% so they went on and on and then made that you know the agent orange actually is used to defoliate plants that is used in the Vietnam war they were doing gorilla war, Americans sprayed that chemical, actually it is called chlorophenols, 2,4-dichlorophenol. When you spray it, your chlorophyll synthesis gets blocked, the chlorophyll. Just like your hemoglobin, the blood, red blood cells, that and green color in the chlorophyll that leaves and the red blood cells, they are absolutely identical. Only difference is you have iron in your blood, you have magnesium in your chlorophyll. So remove the magnesium and put iron, you will, green will become red. And you take the blood, remove the iron and put the magnesium, it will become green. That's as simple as that. So <coughs> that 2,4-D, agent orange, it defoliates, that means it stops the synthesis of that protoporphyrin that makes your blood also, red blood cells. So when they spray that, the green chlorophyll is not formed. That's how they were able to defoliate forests of Vietnam so that they thought they can see from above where these Vietnamese are fighting. But they were not in the forest, they were actually underneath the Bilwa, they were actually in the caves, that's a separate issue. But then that particular event gave rise to what are called herbicides. Herbs, you can kill plants selectively. So the scientists got excited and slowly now got to a stage where they have produced glyphosate. That is your so-called soya bean. They use glyphosate genetically modified soya bean. So they spray on soya bean plant. Soya bean plant does not die, whereas other plants all around dies. Why? Because they have fixed a gene that can deactivate this glyphosate which stops chlorophyll synthesis. So now selectively they got a handle on to make a plant which they want us to, they want to live, make the plant grow, other plants to die. This is the genetic mapping and engineering they did. 
and so grow whichever plant you want kill all the other plants so now i have this glyphs that i spray only soybean plant can grow because it has capacity to withstand the chemical and still make chlorophyll you understand so i have now a plant which makes protein and that i start feeding the cows chicken and all that and you start eating that so what are you eating you are eating glyphosate residues what does it do when it goes into your body it stops making your blood cells red blood cells are being blocked now so your bone marrow gets hit and you start having trouble in the blood synthesis then you have blood cancer in fact cancer started with the invention of these herbicides various kinds of them glyphosate is the hardest toughest so started from 24d they went into this kind of research and they call it science ha huh? and then they tell you eat soya bean because you have lot of protein and not only soya bean you eat something which soya bean is eaten by the cow pig and eat this pig and cow and chicken and what do you do you are concentrating the eat kilos of grains chemical in one go so you eat one egg you are eating 2 kilos of soybean or corn at equivalent chemicals you are swallowing hence the moment they started using these herbicides and pesticides the cancer rate started growing up and wherever you have the use of these chemicals like punjab our uh, andhra telangana rice fields you see each and every house having a cancer patient just recently i went to punjab luthiana patiala all those farajpur seven eight places and everywhere you go you have cancer patients go to america wherever they are using this go to japan go to china you go anywhere it's the same because these chemicals do the same damage in the same place so wherever there is increase of so chemicals are just causing havoc in our body and unluckily this so called glyphosate is found in the blood of penguin there is penguin south pole so we started using this indiscriminately so many tons of it in 1950 the whole world made 5000 tons of this chemicals now one company alone makes 5 lakh tons you imagine the amount that we are using japan alone uses the amount of pesticides fertilizers as much as andhra telangana tamil nadu karnataka and bihar is five states more than that they are used and how much is japan <laughs> and we are not very far we are catching up now india is also huge market for this fertilizers and because we have the agriculture activities for a longer period compared to other parts of the world say in america in england in china they cannot do agriculture for 10 months but we can do 10 months so slowly these companies started invading us and then started convincing all of us that you should eat meat you know you grow soya bean you corn this is good that is good for you this is bad for you so whatever grows in our place is bad for us <coughs> coconut is bad peanut is bad groundnut is bad sesame seed is bad everything coconut you will get cholesterol huh you ground nut you have aflatoxins huh oh why are you eating sesame seeds you will become black <laughs> even to that extent these guys this experts oh you should not see ground nut oil aflatoxins are there never touch it we have got what is called olive oil no you have omega acid e mega acid 3 mega all kinds of lies where is olive oil 
somewhere in Italy some trees are there but now Mumbai alone is eat, drinking 1 billion liters of uh, olive oil per week where is it coming from you need oils you need to press at least 3 to 4 kilos of any seeds to get 800-900 ml of oil so if, 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 if I want this much oil this groundnut oil 100 ml I need minimum of 500 grams of peanuts or groundnuts same thing olive oil and if it is sesame seed oil you need more if you want sunflower oil you need much more because the amount of oil present in sunflower seeds is not as much as oil present in groundnuts coconut oil coconut oil may be the least means in, in two two three kilos you get one kilo of you have lot more oil because what is oil after all in nature just like I told you milk the definition of milk is this is the most unstable product best food available for a baby from their mother's breast the same way what are oils oils you have a coconut huh? just imagine it's a big thing so you can all see it easily coconut where does it grow coconuts grow they are called palm trees okay good but coconuts grow in ocean belts they grow in ocean belts where there is salt water and sweet water mixing like Kerala or Indonesia or Malaysia where there is ocean belts and that too not all ocean belts like in North America there is ocean it won't grow because the temperature doesn't suit so you have this just near the equator 5 to 8 degrees above and you know, wherever that oceans are merging there this wonderful plants and what happens this big thing falls down near the beaches or backwaters and this fellow doesn't know when he can get the soil again to lodge and then make a plant so it hides all the energy in the form of fat so when and if and when it lodges itself onto the soil then it starts germinating so for five to six months it doesn't know once it lodges it will take long time for it to make leaves and then start making its food so it is the stored energy what is a fat material to store energy for future for the birth of the next generation so it is the fat if there is no fat there is no next generation coming into picture in fact all your ovum sperms all are actually fat materials are they are very protecting so little bit of fat is very good because without fat the next generation doesn't get into form and that is the importance of fat in fact fat also has got another important thing is all your muscles you know or fat is there your heart beats because of fat and muscle in fact if you go to Siberia there are certain particular uh, amphibians they just almost go dead because that cools down so much that they go into complete hibernation and their heart almost doesn't beat means it takes maybe more than a minute for that heart that's all controlled by this wonderful fat material so it, it stores the energy so much a little bit of heat is enough it just beats once and then it is surviving I mean all the other functions stop so I mean the most important thing fat does is to keep the life stick to the system that's what is the beauty of this wonderful fat materials so for a seed to grow that is either sesame seed or even your rice or millet for everything for a plant to regrow the first that particular the seed has to break itself and first uh, first thing comes out hmm? that germination is requiring all this wonderful fat materials and depends on 
each material each kind of oils little variations in nature always diversified contents are there so to grow you need fat to grow you need fat and even in our bodies the baby is growing up your liver your kidney your spleen your brain these are all made of 70 to 80 percent of it is fat material so even if you eat glucose carbohydrates it has to be converted into fat for your material so for horse fat is different because its functions are different for cat the fat is different for tiger it's different for elephant it is different for you it is different in fact for me it is a little different so this is the beauty of diversity in nature but everything basis is the same we find ourselves diversifying the generalities are the same but you get diversified so you have to have the local areas producing oils that is what you need to do. so i cannot say i am going to be all right if i take olive oil because olive oil olive tree doesn't grow here you have some other thing ground nuts sesame seeds mustard all these are oil material so whichever material that grows is good for you in that particular locale so you go to america they have pine nuts pine nuts are simply falling but no one has pine nut oil they don't want they want almond oil mm-hmm. see these are all business propositions and in fact there is no almond oil there is no olive oil there is no ground nut all the oils that you are drinking the whole world is drinking is diesel oil <laughs> you have 1 liter of diesel produced in this refineries you have got 400 ml of thin mineral oil which is lower octane octane means carbon 8 units above is used as energy fuel below that hexane oct heptane butane pentane all these are pooled it's like a mineral oil thin transparent oil then i can add little olive oil smell 1 kilo i can make 10000 liters ground nut oil smell another kilo another 10000 liters so that's how you are getting your olive oil so mumbai fellows order 1 billion liters of olive oil no problem in 10 days i will deliver because i have tons and tons and tons of this mineral oil produced in the refinery industries see all these things are happening in between 1980s and 2000 these all industries are finding themselves footing and then they have to start selling these things and this is industry for you science for you all in the name of science all in the name of technology human beings are slowly dragged into these kinds of food this i call food politics can you believe all over the world people are eating sugar rice wheat and all these oils how is it possible tell me how can you have olive oil being supplied all over the world i want to see where are these olive trees producing this much oil just to satisfy mumbai billion liters how where is it coming from where is it coming from in fact if you want real oil only coconuts can supply that much oil for the whole human race you take calculate the number of trees that are just present even today not you growing them they just grow by themselves that is called food politics if human race has to choose coconut oil as their oil we can supply not only for 7 billion people even for 70 billion people and if with little planning and policy decisions we can even supply for more number of people because we can grow that many trees if we want to but then the whole thing is stop sit turvy you want sugar which you are not supposed to because sugar becomes glucose in one step in the digestive process so you have rice you have wheat you have sugar 
dumping yourself because Americans are eating donuts, English fellows are drinking coffee and tea, we also start drinking. Whatever they decide, we do here. They drink uh, this so-called genetically modified milk, we also drink. They want paneer, we want paneer. They are this. Everything is important. All in the name of science and technology and hygiene. Nothing is scientific here for your kind information. All bogus, inflated, completely lies. Complete lies. And all the scientists, all the institutions, all the doctors are party to this. Because no one till today has talked about this imbalance of glucose, imbalance of hormones. On top of it, they are talking other way around. <coughs> that coconut oil is not good for you. Huh? You drink milk, you give milk to your babies, two months is good enough, don't feed her more than that. Because cooking in the house is, hey, you are a housewife, what is this? Your time is better spent doing something else. So you do not cook, why cook now? Order Uber Eats, Swiggy, Zomato, you don't know what he is bringing, you don't know where he has cooked, what he has cooked. No problem, eat on the roads, on the junctions you are getting and then being delivered food. Exactly, they found someone spitting in a pizza for 18 years before they were. Every, every <laughs> no, no, that may be one or two fellows, but we do not know who is making what and where is it made, when it is made and you know, wonderfully, even caterers are using preservatives, chemicals and taste makers. Can you believe everything tastes the same? Pizza, everywhere tastes the same because they use at the end of the day taste makers, sprinkle it, whatever they have done, it tastes the same. So, pizza, in Bombay also tastes the same, in Bangalore also tastes the same. Or go to New York, it is the same taste. And we still think, oh fantastic, how do they make, we wonder, how do they make the same? <laughs> Actually, you should be wondering, how they can make the same taste? It's the other way around we should be wondering, but we are actually wondering the other way. Oh, that's great, they make the same taste, no? Very good. Are you are mad. <coughs> you are being fooled here. How can, in fact, you just go to a Goa tree. Lot of Goas on the tree, you pluck, pluck one from that side, one from this side, they don't taste the same. Nature, it is like that and now here we are producing food for thousands of fellows, the same taste and we still think it is good. So it's gone out of whack, this artificial chemicals that you are eating and you think you are eating food, you are living on notion of food. There is no real oil on oh, strawberry ice cream, huh? everyone is eating strawberry ice cream. I don't know where these strawberries are from. How tons and tons and tons of ice cream these Mumbai fellows and Bangalore fellows, these two fellows are good enough. <laughs> Eating like mad, everyone eats strawberry ice cream. So, where is strawberry? <laughs> In Canada they produce this much, you know, some 10 tons or something like that. Beyond that it doesn't go. Oh, I have big polycarbon uh, Big, big units, I have two acres, three acres, they are producing strawberry. They grow in cold areas and these fellows are putting AC rooms and growing strawberries. Adding chemicals and you think you are eating the right food? Again, the same thing, they are adding one kilo of strawberry flavor and giving you as ice cream. And what is ice cream? There is no milk there. It's all powder, it's all chemicals, preservatives. You guys are loving it. Yeah, I love it. Another advertisement. See, these guys came, these chemicals are being sold left. Ah, Jim, 
gyming you know girls are also going with gym you know, six pack 10 packs all at a sudden salman khan makes a movie another fellow makes some dangal bangal or hoot hoot and everyone is going for gym you know, left and right and you go on you whey protein this protein all these steroid companies chemical companies are the financiers of these movies so all at a sudden you find gyms popping up tak 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 what nonsense you go and drink those whey protein this protein i told you you have mustache on your lips and then laser treatment so this is you see this whole imbalances due to the food that we think we are eating pizza burger noodles wheat sugar oils and we all call ourselves advanced civilized societies societies and then feed this stupid chemical ridden grains and produce more chicken more pigs more cows i believe 10 billion cows are being slaughtered 8 billion pigs 100 billion chicken over a period of 10 years and they go on and on producing on and on and on and on and eggs no tons and tons of eggs a chicken in its whole life gives 20 or 21 eggs huh? now each day each chicken is giving 200 300 tak 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 you give an electric shock inject a steroid get eggs tak 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 and on the roads everyone starve eggs are good for you eat 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 you are basically dumping yourself with all these hormones so what happened actually men started losing their sperm now the sperm count is 20 million it should be 120 million one is gone only 20 is left <laughs> oh i don't have kids no problem we have ivf centers second business option now ah. you see how they are slowly in the name of science huh? in the name of technology they are converting everything these are all chemical industries left and right in the name of all these are done by scientists mind you so are they really scientists and who are at stake your kids you have this unwanted sperms dead sperms sick sperms kids are born as differently abled autistic what we have is dysfunctional kids coming out the embryo the ovum becoming embryo embryo becoming kid all the material supplied are wrong the oils are not there what are the oils the real oils should have been this a slowly bull driven coconut oil slowly bull driven mustard oil these are the real oils that can make your brain grow niger seed oils you understand what is going on now and no scientist no doctor no politician no university no agric- agriculture scientist this is a sh- sham of the century is agriculture scientists all bogus fellows making us believe that they are doing agriculture they are feeding us chemicals one kilo of rice has got almost 8 mg of these chemicals wheat much more sugar worse than anything else so so you have created hormonal imbalance you have created glucose imbalance because you are accumulating glucose in your blood so fast and you are supposed to burn glucose and get energy you need only 5 grams of blood sugar to be healthy to be balanced but how much are you pumping now the same uh, salman khan fellow comes and says thumbs up you drink amir khan comes drink coke and then another khan what is his philosophy shahrukh khan, uh, Shahru khan. Uh, sir, uh, another pepsi or whatever all these guys are not selling this they are selling 40 to 50 grams of sugar in 100 ml of water
सो संडे या मंडे खाओ अंडे तेंदुलकर कम्स एंड शोज दिस इज वॉट इज गोइंग ऑन एंड ऑन एंड ऑन दे आर जस्ट बैटरिंग अस विथ दिस टी वी एड्स वी आर ऑल ब्रेन वॉश्ड कंप्लीटली ब्रेन वॉश्ड एंड एज इफ इट इज नॉट अनफ टू मिनिट्स आर एनफ यू डोंट नीड मदर यू डोंट नीड फादर यू कैन मेक योर ओन नूडल्स सो यंग बॉयज एंड गर्ल्स आर बॉय बट टू मिनिट्स Horlicks is good for you. Bornvita is good for you. For what? You cannot even shit if you go on drinking this. So, what do we do? We have created imbalance by choosing these things as our food. Many people say we are eating junk food. We are not eating junk food. We are eating junk. There is no food. So, food means what? the glucose should be coming into our blood slowly and steady am i right if it is more then what it does the blood the endocrine glands all these things work over time and create more cholesterol more triglycerides more rheumatic factor more glycogen more fat more meat now people start becoming obese oh yeah obesity is a disease what is disease it is higher amount of glucose you are pumping in the body is trying to take care of it what if it is there in the blood it starts absorbing water from all the living cells because sugar and salt they don't keep quiet they want water they pull water so if the sugar that is glucose is more in the blood you know it sucks so you start becoming thirsty so you go and drink water you go to your net so you want toilet near by the bed now you are attached bathrooms now can you believe you have bathrooms in your bedroom you don't have all over the world everyone has built <laughs> toilets in the bedrooms the most shocking thing for me even today i still wonder why is there toilet in my bedroom because i cannot control my urine the moment you feel you have to run and so on in japan why all this problem they have toilet under the bed press the button <laughs> i'm not joking i'm trying to joke but it's a serious problem all these things are happening and the doctors are telling you some other reasons the reason is very simple you have imbalance of hormones imbalance of glucose and another most important imbalance is another thing that has separated us from nature is the microbes when you are born you born to your mother through vagina when you are coming out your mother lodges some microbes in your mouth that's actually the incubation of gut microbes it's called but nowadays um, yesterday last week as uh, bangalore front page news 78% born in cesarean <laughs> so you you are not going to be born again no you have to come out through the right passage then you have things going on right now you come out of the tummy because this fellow opens it up and removes so basic microbes that are supposed to be there in your body it's not there and on top of it we have been killing whatever is left through our food in fact you eat chilies you take some microbes you know i am giving you a simple experiment you take groundnut milk you ground take the groundnuts and grind it and make milk and then take the chilies that stem remove that and put it within 5 hours it becomes curds curds yeah you have milk you know you so called desi milk you don't have curds to put you just have to put 15 or 20 chilies many people think one will do no it will not suffice you just warm the milk 
and then add this within 5 6 hours you get curds that means the microbes that lactobacillus is there in many materials of natural materials so the leaves the greens the vegetables all harbor these wonderful microbes that actually go and start inhabiting your gut you understand they are called gut microbes and why are they needed they are the ones which actually make lot of chemicals for your body including vitamin b12 vitamin b12 without that you cannot have your blood your metabolisms go right everything goes haywire so who is making not only vitamin b12 there are many more things 50 percent of biochemicals required in your body are made by these microbes but then what we have been doing systematically is killing these microbes the moment baby is born you go to they will put vaccination they will give antibiotics the whole life one should not take more than twice antibiotics before the age of five we are pumping five to ten times antibiotics to the kids so whatever little microbes that are left by eating curds or this you are draining them off by this antibiotics and you don't need to even eat anti uh, take antibiotics you just eat two eggs good enough you have enough antibiotics to kill you have enough steroids to puff push it out flush it out and if you eat one kilo of meat enough for six months you will clean up this is the reason why you should not eat meat or eggs or and fish is another big story you have accumulated as i told you the penguin has got this glyphosate all the fish in the world the water bodies are contaminated with lead and mercury so you eat one kilo fish you will have 0 0.008 ppm of lead entering your body this is the story so you are contaminating and eliminating all that wonderful things that you need in your tummy called microbes sushma so how beautifully you have imbalanced yourself hormone imbalance glucose imbalance microbial imbalance and these three are actually the only things required for your health and well be so in the name of science and technology last 40 50 years all these scientists all these doctors all these politicians all these universities have systematically managed to imbalance you on top of it hey we have doctors giving you tablets i have bp take this tablet how long life long i have thyroid lifelong I have rheumatism lifelong I have diabetes lifelong I have cancer till you live laugh I gave you a joke but we cannot laugh because it is very serious problem so what do you get if you go to doctors now are you getting health you are going to get tablets tablet after tablet tablet of this surya calls i am bashing who am i bashing i am telling you the truth as it is so you have become fat you have become obese doctors telling all kinds of things the well, only thing he has to tell is don't eat rice and meat and don't eat egg that's all isn't it the solution is so simple so what to eat you don't eat rice don't eat wheat don't drink milk don't eat. what else is there left <laughs> so we have forgotten all that god has given no one knows so 25 years back i did this analysis and found oh god the whole human race is going out of whack and lo and behold these grains are actually disappeared from the planet and these guys have wonderful balance of 
fiber to carbohydrate so that they release glucose slowly steadily into your bloodstream that is the beauty of this little millet it's called little millet called african millet sama we call and it has 9.8% of fiber for 100 grams of material so it holds the carbohydrate digestion in your body slowly and steadily quantum by quantum little little amounts glucose is released in your body so that your liver your spleen your pancreas does not have any extra work to do so the regulation the control is in this grain itself so if you are scientist what do you do you find some more grains which are like this and that's what we did we figured out five grains one after the other so we grew them in fact i came running back in 1993 and then started searching for these kinds of grains which have got wonderful yeah barnyard millet is called this is little millet uh, keep that barnyard yeah this is barnyard actually barnyard millet is known as japanese millet german millet russian millet there are varieties of this barnyard millet and uh, this liver kidney all this fat materials that are in our body soft parts are cleaned by this fiber content and this fiber is very interesting it has got two components one soluble part in water another is insoluble part so out of 9.8 grams approximately third of it is actually insoluble and 2 by 3rd of it is soluble so the soluble fiber of little millet goes into the blood and goes into your genital regions that is your sperm making place and your ovum making place in females and males and cleans up that place so you have wonderful sperm wonderful healthy ovum being generated so all this imbalance of hormone imbalance can be corrected through the fiber of the little millet and the kodo millet its fiber soluble and insoluble goes to the bone marrow where you are producing your blood all parts of your blood four different kinds of units of the blood everything in fact it regenerates the bone marrow in 3 years Three months, you actually recycle your blood. I mean, every three months, you produce new red blood cells, white blood cells, like that. But then the bone marrow, where this is produced, itself is regenerated. New things is formed in three and a half years, three three and a half years. So actually, overall in the body, are not what you were before seven years. So each and every cell is regenerated. New thing is formed. You are the same. You are the same fellow, but you are not a the same your cells are completely regenerated new things are coming up over a period of 7 years that's why 7 is very important the regeneration of things so if i now you are sick with all these imbalances you are fat you have diabetes you have brain tumor you have all kinds of disorders of the menstrual cycles how do i correct it by giving another steroid by removing your uterus no no we have now your heart problem i have 3d printing buy one get one free i will remove your knee and this is what the doctors and medical industry is offering for you everything has been converted into business propositions so at the worst or at the best these so called doctors are selling technologies or tablets are they really fixing our health no they are not you want to fix your health where do you go you need to go to the kitchen make good food right food and eat so 
within seven years whatever may be your problems including genetically so called genetic disorders can be corrected and other problems like cancer diabetes obesity all these things are just a matter of 6 months to 1 year maximum because these are all peripheral problems we have created through imbalances of microbes hormones glucose all those things can be corrected with this wonderful grains because they harbor microbes so you cook them the fiber and carbohydrate you leave them the fermentation begins you don't need to add anything they harbor the microbes you get them so you soak them in the night you have to soak because there is enough fiber all this rice and wheat has no fiber is so a two minutes noodles na put it in hot water you are ready because there is no fiber just carbohydrate so you want to cook you need to soak soaking is the first step of any cooking including dals rajma beans you want to really have healthy beans recipes you soak them first overnight and then cook them you will have no problems so if without soaking you cook your digestion because it doesn't you have to soak the fiber to make it swell then you cook so what happens 1 kilo 10 people can eat 1 kilo if you soak and cook 10 people can eat and then if you pour more water and allow it to ferment for another 5 hours after cooking you have the wonderful microbial stuff coming into and that we call in hindi khamir in southern indian language called ambali so you feed your baby 1 200 ml of this ambali daily you are correcting almost all the imbalances microbial imbalance glucose imbalance hormone imbalance ambali a m b a l i you understand now so can you repeat what is ambali fermented porridge absolutely so soak the grain take say 100 grams add 1 liter of water 10 times more soak it don't throw the water because lot of vitamins lot of good stuff comes into the water so don't throw that don't wash it too much just once within a minute you throw it one wash and then put 10 times water and keep it overnight morning you cook on a slow flame same water same water correct you understand why you should do and if you do not want that you take that water and make some sambar or something don't throw it you have to eat anyway you have to consume that okay so again you can add fresh water and cook but don't throw the water you have soaked or you can cook in the same water no problem and if you use earthenware that is mud pot is the best because for fermentation mud pots are the best so tie a muslin cloth that is khadar uh, cloth not this synthetic uh, teflon hong kong tang tang and all these cloths uh, very bad because they don't allow even the air to go in you will choke them so muslin cloth it will allow the air uh, but not allow the other microbes to get in what is harboring in the grain that only will increase so that is the fermentation of each grain is different you have wonderful different 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 microbes from different khamirs so every 2 3 days once you change the grain add ambali so all fat fellows in no time actually i have had wonderful results many girls who are 200 kilos 180 kilos the other day from america one girl came 320 kilos so i lost 5 kg this 5 kg peanuts so we will 50 kg we can make you lose no problem yeah allow it to cool tie the muslin cloth and then leave it till the evening if you are in mumbai 5 hours are good enough because it's very hot if you are in mysore my place you need to keep it for 12 hours it's cool 
20 degrees, 30 degrees below. That's but here you go beyond 30. So the fermentation happens faster in hot and humid places, especially Mumbai, Vishakhapatnam, that ocean belt areas. So once you do that you are ready to take and you can eat with sambar or whatever you know chutney and vegetables greens as side dishes just instead of chapati or rice you have khamir and so you are sick you have cancer blood cancer lung cancer <laughs> uterus cancer prostate cancer all these cancers mouth cancer, lot of this Gutka Putka fellows are putting cigarette, all these fellows have mouth cancers, esophagus cancer, all these cancers, it doesn't matter, same, the part is different, <laughs> problem is the same. So you can get rid of these cancerous agents by the wonderful work of this microbial balance that is created, they actually make the chemicals that are required to throw away, including the carcinogenicity from your body. So a tumor is growing, the cells are corrected, the cancer condition is removed from your body. As I told you, it takes seven years to completely regenerate, rejuvenate yourself. So most often, most of these cancers in two, two and a half years completely thrown out of your body. So we have blood cancer patients, uterus cancer patients, breast cancer patients, brain cancer, all these cancers we have made a list, this, like this, some 15 or 20 cancer patients, uh -huh. yeah, this is actually 14, but here itself there are three cancers, uterus, cervical, ovarian, uh, prostate, kidney, like that, um, brain, all kinds of stuff. You have this PDF you can download from sirijeevan.org. Free it is for everyone all over the world. Anyone can download. And we also, as I told you, we have decoctions. Instead of coffee and tea, you have basil, kashayam, and grass, Bermuda grass, people leaf, uh, currant leaves, and including palm leaves. Also wonderful for HIV, SLE, these kind of so-called dreaded diseases like DMD, muscular dystrophy. They are very rare diseases but they are troubling people. And now you have Corona, Junka, H1N1, H5N1. All these things are bogus things because you are imbalanced. That's why all these things are happening. So if you are balanced, your immunity is from within. I care two hoots about Corona, I care two hoots about H5N1, nothing happens to me because my bone marrow is strong. It can produce T cells, immunoglobulins, everything required because we have all these wonderful decoctions that can provide us antigens. Bilpatra, again it is called. So wonderful antigens are given to your bone marrow, you produce antibodies. So even before the viruses come, if you are drinking these kashayams, your body is already having all the antibodies. So we have on an experimental basis figured out if you drink these seven kashayams on a four day basis or weekly basis. So one week of Bermuda grass, one week of basil, one week of tinospora, one week of agale, that is wood apple, one week of karanj, one week of neem, neem is, you know, neem leaves. And then people, people leaves are the best. It can correct your hormone imbalance also. So just run around the people tree, your menstrual cycles, your uh, this menopause problems, all will disappear. Many women are suffering that their body is hot flashes. If it is cold, they feel hot. If it is hot, they feel cold. They sweat, then everyone is okay. They want fan in the cold season. All these imbalances are due to your problems can be corrected if you just sit under the people tree for an hour. 
you don't need to even drink kashaya just the air carries the nano particles and you get corrected in fact that's what we had in our temples we had people tree we had bil patra but now temples are having marriage function halls <laughs> serving pepsi coke nowadays 24 into 7 ha huh? mumbai's ha huh? gift of today for you guys ha huh? 24 7 bars drink and dance ah drink and dance people are drinking mugs of beer and say liquor can you believe this governments are earning their money on liquor selling liquor and we call ourselves civilized societies all over the world we are getting addicted to different kinds of chemicals we are not understanding that you are addicted to sugar you are addicted to coffee you are addicted to chai you are addicted to liquor you are addicted to drugs that california so called progressive state they have made marijuana free you can buy any amount so because they guys have said our everest under the everest lot of places they are growing marijuana the forest is cut marijuana is grown because we as i told you we're all drinking coffee and tea the whole rivers are drying up so on top of it all this environmental is keep grow the plants make the plants grow where, where there were thousands and thousands millions and billions of plants were there it's because we are drinking coffee and tea they have disappeared so unless you stop drinking coffee and tea your rivers will not flow again my kaveri in karnataka is dried up your ganga is also dried up how can we rejuvenate by not planting trees we had planted trees only if you don't cut them if you don't cut them means what you have to stop drinking coffee and tea so unless you stop drinking coffee and tea unless you stop eating eggs unless you stop eating chicken nothing is going to save the planet this is the reason why we should have sustainable food practices and the right food so unless you change your food can you be healthy but what are all you guys doing in the name of advanced treatments you are running to america you are running to australia you are running to jaslok hospital oh, mumbai oh big big hospitals ha huh? what do you get there you get nothing what happens is your money goes into their accounts nothing else happens and you get fear you get sleepless nights nothing else and this is the sad story of human race but you all should be actually looking towards the farmers that grow this kind of grains that make this kind of oils am i right so where have we lost our health we have lost it in our kitchens so you better go back into your kitchen and your fields search there not in this multi speciality hospitals how stupid can you get we just we are following those guys huh? if they are stupid we are idiots you understand what i am saying sir madam i am just about to finish we will have interactive session so you understand the mistakes that we have been doing i am not actually blaming anyone it's i am also party to it i am also living with you guys you know i also have problems because i also ate all these stupid things <coughs> hmm there was no awareness absolutely absolutely we are being misled by this so called nutritionists you go to nutrition oh, you eat strawberry it is good you eat these you eat there a big list there right why these are all trained in the western countries and they call themselves nutritionists it is the local things that we need 
and our ayurveda pandits are all again seeing those guys they started selling in dabbas plastic dabbas this churnam this that all big big names huh? and then advertisements nowadays 5000 year wisdom <laughs> concentrated in this dabba call on amazon huh? we will send you home what nonsense is this this is the problem because we are converting everything into money so even the knowledge oh i am patenting i don't want to share no i have something it is secret what secret our great ancient wisdom is there everyone can actually dig in and get it people tree is good so if you have trees you have health and without trees how can you get healthy but then we want to cut trees make roads one lane two lane three lane now eight lanes not enough that's what i was telling you mumbai fellows are great you keep spending all your life in the traffic only minimum 5 hours daily and you still think you are very very great living yeah you are making lot of money i agree i don't know what you do with your money you are in traffic <laughs> whether you are rich you are in bmw car or in an auto you are still in the traffic only huh whether you are a doctor or a scientist or fellow selling vegetables all are in the same traffic spend hours together in the traffic so this is modern urban living for you you have got disconnected from nature the real grains the real food so if your food is right then you don't need any medicine and if your food is wrong no medicine works the hippocrates some fellow said if you if your food should be your medicine medicine should be your food that's also wrong statement according to me your food is food medicine is medicine only when you are sick you need medicine so medicine cannot be food food cannot be medicine food gives you health medicine removes some ill health that's all that is the difference so if your food is right you don't need any medicine that means you can be healthy so you want to be healthy go back to your kitchen learn how to cook learn how to make ambali learn how to make idli learn how to make dosa idli dosa are actually fermented products ambali is the real fermentation along with microbes so all fermented stuff are good because you are encouraging the microbes or microbial products going into your body so idli has got actually vitamin b12 you have fermented there is no microbe the yeast or whatever is gone but you still have the products of the fermentation so the pickles pickles very bad for you your bp will increase but in fact contrary pea pickles are very good for you see all our food items food practices are being labeled as unhygienic or unscientific because they want to sell their products and no one stands up and says this is wrong because that is science you see people who is telling scientists are talking are they really talking science actually they are doing business they call it mbbs <coughs> business of medicine business of surgery that is the definition very sad actually um, i find it very odd that i have to give lectures <coughs> to so called educated civilized people because a lot of engineers have got diabetes lot of doctors md ms doctors you take 100 of them 30 of them have got diabetes 10 have cancers i mean there is no difference between any group your ideal sad is the same ideally they fall into the same pie chart that means human race has lost its way with regards to food 
in the name of producing more food or whatever we are not producing food we are actually producing poison laced materials and feeding our babies to the extent now we are actually having dysfunctional kids on the roads 28 kids are born dysfunctionally no pragna they cannot even have eye contact only if you have eye contact you can learn things they don't remember anything they don't know who they are if that is the problem with the kids now elders who are all right are also becoming alzheimer patient what is alzheimer you forget who you are it starts with little forgetfulness you do not know where you have kept your watch you do not know where you have kept your phone then over a period of time you forget the name of your wife after some time you forget your wife after some time you forget yourself this is the progress of alzheimer's disease the neurons are losing the balance you do not know who you are and you lose consciousness of yourself and many people are living like that which is a sad thing isn't it we can prevent all this by just shifting to natural food systems and food production methods and that's why we call jungle farming without any inputs sustainable model of living so only if you change the food you can have this wonderful sustainable model so the amount of water you spend to produce 1 kilo of wheat is 10000 liters you give me 10000 liters i will produce siridhanya this we call five grains siridhanya because they are positive grains that is giving you all this balance and health into your system we named as siridhanya in south india siri means the ultimate wealth the ultimate wealth it's not money it is not gold it is not real estate it is the health arogyame mahabhagya that is what we call in our language arogya is mahabhagya i think you understand the words yes. so that's how we termed this siridhanya so 10000 liters of water you need only 200 liters of water just to calculate just rain comes they grow you don't need any water actually even in winter just absorbing the moisture uh, the fog it grows the arka grows like that you don't need anything actually but still for calculation purpose you say 200 liters so out of 10,000 liters how many kgs I can grow 5 into 10 so 50 kilos each kilo if I soak well and cook well how many people can eat 10, Ten people so 50 kilos 500 people can eat the same wheat 1 kilo how many people eat 4 people or 5 people maximum so I have consumed the same amount of water with wheat you are giving food for five fellows how many people 500 people so five is to 500 that means if you give one person food I can give 100 food so that means now with the whatever production you are doing you are feeding 7 billion people say you are feeding so how many people I can feed 700 billion people I can feed now which is sustainable obviously <laughs> am I right so we calculated the water that is required for Bihar people to eat you give me that water I can produce food for India and China together and Bihar Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh water I can produce food for the whole world and see how wrongly we have chosen you see the dimensions in which we have been affected and now we are talking about there is no water no water where are you consuming your water here the food production and if you talk of meat one kilo meat is 50,000 liters of water so 500 into 10 5,000 people food one kilo meat 
four people are okay so i don't know how much people eat nowadays you know you know <laughs> this is the joke of the actually for, for me this is the real joke the ramzan you know ramzan this muslims are supposed to <coughs> what fast. fast and eat less and preserve food and then give it to poor people this is the story of ramzan uh, am i right <laughs> what happened in bangalore and hyderabad i don't know about uh, i don't know about bombay i think the story is the same in in a year bangalore consumes 1 lakh tons of meat 1 lakh tons of meat in in a year so per month average is around 10000 uh, whatever 10000 units of meat on ramzan month what do you expect should go down isn't it but the 10 lakh or uh, 10000 units has become 33 units 33 times 3.3 times more both in hyderabad and in bangalore and then i just calculated there are only 14% of muslims in bangalore and in hyderabad it is 16 point something so how can the whole consumption of meat go up by 3 times even if you think the muslims are waking up in the night and eating because they are not supposed to eat in the day time of course they eat in the night and then in the morning so they are not really fasting but then 16% fellows how can you account 3.3 times more meat consumption that means what in the name of muslims all the guys are eating this biryanis in the night am i right so this meat eating is such a bad thing because you are consuming 5000 people's natural resource which is very important resource of nature water which is not available and we call we are scientifically sustainable production of food and eating so on this count at least if not your health to make the world sustainable you need to shift to to these things of course luckily you become healthy is a bonus for you your kids will be born healthy you will have dysfunctional kids coming down completely because you are going to produce these oils and feed yourself and your babies in fact we have cured the so called dysfunctional kids by giving niger seed oil coconut oil and within 3 years the kids who are not able to say appa amma ma ba they are going to school and learning on a regular basis hundreds of kids if not they go to schools at least they can maintain themselves that kind of sanity we have brought back in many kids in fact a, a girl 17 year old girl dysfunctional kid used to actually take knives and needles and all in the night poke their mother and father they don't know when she will do this damage so they never slept years just drink it and uh, i told you the food fox tail millet and brown uh, kodo millet two two days and then the remaining three one day each this is base the food that is what is correcting all the imbalance and hundreds of kids who are not able to have eye contact getting eye contact started learning and so do you get the clue it's not dysfunctional in the babies we are all dysfunctional sometime or the other we also have a mental illnesses sometimes we are depressed sometimes we are angry sometimes we are irritated with ourselves with our husbands with our spouses with our kids we are beating up our kids and husbands are beating wives nowadays wives are also beating up the husbands <laughs> <laughs> all these are actually the digressions of the imbalance that don't think these guys are imbalanced kids we are also imbalanced now and then i also get angry you also get angry all these are all you not being 
all right mental disability unstable minds almost same according to me it is the amount of time you are maintaining your sanity you are called okay fellow <laughs> am i right sir <laughs> so i am not actually trying to communicate to people that you are all sick we are all sick some extent or there it's a matter of extent that's all so actually i am not blaming anyone i am trying to figure out communicate to people the where things have gone wrong unless you go and correct that you will not be healthy and that is the lesson that i am trying to communicate to you through all these ramblings of my you know i go on talking like this and people say hey he keeps talking he keeps rambling but i am trying to communicate to you that we have done mistakes and unless we correct that nothing is going to happen but we are all trying to find solutions in a realm where nothing exists and that is the fallacy of our mind we need to come out of that so unless we start looking for the real materials and oh wow, i like sweet don't worry we have sweet i told you bengal fellows even now they are making palm jaggery and we can make enough for the whole world for the whole world can get this sweet palm jaggery very good it balances your blood it gives you lot of iron it has wonderful qualities in fact it corrects your sexual imbalances all that the wonderful meat because you know when how this is made this is made and again palm trees fish tail palm silver date palm all this ha huh? palm jaggery yeah. yeah in bengal even now because of those uh, delta regions you have lot of this palm <laughs> pharmacy this silver date palm small uh, fruits they get what actually happens is when the flowering sessions goes on on these plants they just make a small cut so the sap is flowing into the flowering and making the fruits you have lot of fructose not glucose glucose is very small amount in this so you get that milk and then just boil before sunrise why sunrise once sun falls the temperature it starts fermenting and if you do not have that line this becomes alcohol that is kallu in in our language we call kallu so the same palm jaggery if you allow fermentation that milk you will get alcoholic you actually that is what is brewing industry you have oats you ferment you get beer and the same fermentation we are doing we have microbes that are good and if you allow it further you will become alcohols comes and that's how alcohol industry banana they are making wine so you people think we are growing banana for eating banana no it's a again liquor industry but if it is fermented isn't it good yeah the microbes are good but if it is fermented to the alcohol level it is dangerous everything balance balance has to be for this pamphlet yeah you see if you start asking for it then people start making am i right because you all want noodles you are getting noodles because you all want pizzas you have pizzas so you all want palm jaggery so what about the sugar cane palm jaggery and that has lot of glucose is it good no better than uh, refined sugar yeah but not good your question answer is yes but still it's not good for you this is the best sweet that you can yeah don't use normal jaggery use palm jaggery so palm jaggery little millet and then niger seed oil to make paisam wonderful healthy sweet dish to feed your babies in fact that is the naivedyam in many of temples of all over india all over india this was the naivedyam made 
in Tirupati, in uh, Krishna temple, Vaishnava, all temples, Sai Vaitara, everyone. This is what they were giving. Now this generation don't know. Now they are giving palav and biryanis. <laughs> no, this is the sad story of human race. See how scientific they were. When you go to a temple, they were giving this as prasad. And in our Puranas, it is mentioned, the Varaha Swami, after getting the earth up from the demon or devil, whoever, he fought for 18 days. His lungs were breathing hard and then they didn't know what to do. They asked, Swami, what do we do? He said, get me Priyangu Paisam. Priyangu is foxtail millet. Harangu is Kodo millet. Samangu is little millet. Like this, the tribals, even before the script existed, the stories, and this is written in Varaha Purana. I have gone to the forest tribal areas in our Karnataka, there is called BR Hills. Even today, there are Soligar who have been like tracing back to thousands of years. I went and lived with them for six to seven days to just, they all actually eat this Koda millet. They make Khamir and actually they put it in bamboo bottle, dig the pit and keep it. And they actually put a small stick on the top so that they remember where it is. And then they go around and collect this honey, this and that. They come back in the evening, it is fermented in the round two, three feet below. And the bamboo, the inner side has got actually lignans, which are actually completely can clear your cancerous condition. See how beautiful they were doing. So the same thing happens if you ferment in a mud pot or things like that. And the grain itself, uh, this is the palm uh, tree, uh, this is all that information is in the sirijivan.org, uh, all the details are given. Whatever I have spoken, actually I am speaking in a cohesive fashion, but each and everything in detail. And you see the fiber content, the carbohydrate content and the ratio being single digits, these five grains and other grains like uh, she was mentioning finger millet, jowar, all those are actually neutral millets. They cannot give you health. But if you are eating them, you are okay, but you put on weight and sometimes you become diabetic, sometimes your moods are off because you are not eating little millet. You are, many people have malaria, keep getting the same uh, sickness now and then you take typhoid tablet, you take malaria tablet, all these tablets, again six months later you get the same problem because you have not corrected your imbalance. So come to Kodo millet, your bone marrow itself is recharged and reshaped, rejuvenated. So the disease is completely gone. You become internally strong. The immunity builds up because you are cleaning the place where your immunity is built. And that's what these five wonderful grains to their fiber content does for you. That fiber content I explain to you how it does things. So no doctor, no scientist has talked the importance of fiber. What are they telling? Oh, you eat lot of vegetables, you get fiber. But the fiber you say get, you have rice and wheat dumping glucose, no use. And that fiber from plants, the greens and leaves, does not have lignans. Whereas these upper layers of these grains, the lignans are there. And that's what really makes the job easy for your body to clean up to get rid of all this nonsense that we have been dumping in our body in the name of modern food practices. So if you do not stop eating rice and wheat, many people think, oh, I will eat five days this, two days that, huh? three days this, because you still want your biryani, you still want your pulka and your kulcha. You can make all of them. You can make biryani, you can make kulcha, you can make pulka, everything you can make with these five grains and there is a, a 
Biophilian's Kitchen is a YouTube channel and uh, my daughter uh, is starting uh, Sarala. She conducts actually three day course. Much more details. I talk two hours or one and a half hour but she goes on explaining each and every part and then water, how to clean water, how to clean vegetables, how to make oils and you know all these things in detail each and every uh, thing that goes into your mouth and actually if you put little bit of palm jaggery your water distribution on the body is also good so in fact the people earlier people who used to go to work in the hot summers just put and I'm sure this practice when you are going out your mother or your wife used to give small, small amount of palm jaggery, put it in your mouth. It works wonders to sustain your energy. You don't need to drink water anywhere and everywhere because you want your structured water. So you take all this rubbish, plastic water, RO water, this water. Hema uh, Malini comes, sells one uh, filter and Madhuri Dikshit comes and sells another filter. Nowadays, even Tendulkar has joined another Amitabh Bachchan. Everyone is selling, they are selling plastic, not water. That you people don't understand. So that plastic water has nanoparticles. We are all consuming almost 5 grams of plastic on an yearly basis. All is going and depositing on your large intestine and small intestines. So even to remove that, that is there in your tummy, you drink real structured water by allowing the water to touch the copper plate. So take a steel vessel of 20 liters, put this copper plate, the D electrons that are shifting from D and S, clean up your water without any problem. Six to seven hours. In fact, that's what I do because I keep traveling Almost every week I travel three to four days. So I take this bottle and I have put a small copper plate here. I buy this same plastic water, put it here and I have one more bottle. After two, three hours I put it and again put plastic water here. So this water is ready. So you clean up water and in fact we in our house have a big 20 liters and put this plate and then we use that only for our uh, cooking and drinking and washing vegetables, everything we do that. So all this information is on this and there is one more uh, website, you know, Wholesome Tales, some Hindi versions and a lot of uh, from Delhi, some Ashoka person. I recently went to Punjab, he came and met me and he has shown me all that and he is they are doing in Hindi also. So. All the cooking and actually it is the cooking that is the serious and very interesting part. So you cook your food, you eat, that's what Surya started. I am cooking my food, I am eating in my house but I still sick. The same question many people ask but what you are cooking and what you are eating is not the right thing to do. So, so if you eat rice and wheat and still think that I am cooking my and that means what? You are actually pressing the accelerator as well as brake. So I eat millet for two days because Dr. Khadar came and gave a lecture. I am very inspired, hot, hoot and then go and eat for two days. Ah, yo, what is this? I have to eat my gulab jamun anyway. <laughs> I have to drink my coffee anyway. So, what are you doing to yourself? You are like a car being pressed on accelerator and brake together and then the gadi goes kaput. That's all that will happen. And that's what is actually happening. Many people think, oh, I eat millets for my health and I gorge on these things because I have to splurge. And this kind of nutritionists are also there. You can eat once in a while this, once in a while that. Absolute nonsense. Cheating. Yeah, yeah, cheating. cheating. Uh, I'm cheating. Uh, okay, whatever. Yeah, like you have a peg, you know, once a week you have a peg like that. So please come out of this unscientific <laughs> processes that go on in your mind. I keep talking these things again and again because that's where our problem is. We are all thoroughly brainwashed. 
in the name of science and tech oh we have been eating rice for long time what long time it's not even 50 years <laughs> there was no wheat or rice before that it was there on this planet but not the way we are producing it because see, to produce it you have done lot of golmal here am i right so whereas these grains you don't need to do any hangama the sad story is we are not even cultivating them we have lost the grains actually as i told you fox tail millet is called italian millet italians used to eat now there is no <coughs> grain in italy i go and ask them where is your italian millet ah, they are looking at like that <laughs> nigeria i went recently little millet is absolutely not there actually i gave them all the five seeds just day before yesterday they sent me all the grains back 3 3 kilos they have grown and then they are very happy in nigeria they are now growing i went to america again gave them sweets some of the indians are growing there so we need to make the whole plant grow these grains it's not that karnataka grows and then we supply to you all it's difficult <laughs> that's not sustainable you need to grow we are willing to help you if you are interested in growing processing all that information we have actually we have you can process it in your your own place your own house everything from sowing to cooking and eating we have the information and you can attend this jangal krushi in mysore near mysore we conduct two day program you are in the field you can see them now growing in fact uh, next uh, when is that february 14th. february 14th and 15th we conduct in english we conduct in hindi we conduct in telugu no, depending upon the audience you can book and come there you will enjoy your lifetime experience actually it's wonderful place so how to grow how to process and uh, how to make the oils everything we demonstrate you can see real time and uh, enjoy yourself that is apart from right now you can get things from karnataka or uh, hyderabad because i have been there uh, last 15 20 years i have been working and now karnataka is number one place in the world to produce this uh, grains in large quantities and now Tamil Nadu and Telangana are catching up um, so we want the whole world to grow so the whole world can sustain itself and then let's leave the water that we are consuming which belongs to the rivers which belongs to the other animals on this planet you know because you are drinking coffee and tea millions of animals are dying in the forest so i actually very angry about it very angry about it if only you stop drinking coffee and tea they can live you are not even aware of it you guys are not even aware of it every day morning chai pe charcha karenge why what the hell are you doing? you first stop drinking chai you can do charcha not on chai chai is killing people there killing animals killing forests your chai and coffees are the reason so please come out of it there are a lot of plant leaves decoctions and a sustainable method you just pluck four leaves in another week they will give you 12 leaves and that should be our practice we should sustain we should make things happen grow instead we are killing and devouring the nature that's not the right way of living and the present modern living is actually what we are doing that so please wake up shake yourself up huh after waking shake <laughs> no it is needed in fact every animal does that but we don't we just get up and want to because we are busy in urine it is cannot hold just run to the toilet you need to get up stretch lift your legs turn twist let the body flow and then i keep telling many places i think i'll come and show you here you should know how to sit to sit properly you should know how to sit s i t huh? this is the way you sit then your anus opens and you can sit very easy 
this is how you sew and if you can sit for one minute it comes out by itself but what are we doing we have built western toilet so like that it is closed <laughs> it doesn't come out <laughs> and then you say i have hemorrhoids i have piles i have fissures i have this i have that no problem i have a scissor and knife come i will operate i have liquid nitrogen i will burn you cold burn hot burn what nonsense if you know how to actually that is called malasan a type of vajrasana you know you get up yeah you first you know how to sit you are not able to sit that you need practice madam and that is what is called yoga asana i told you what, what is this stretching touching all you different this is called <coughs> trikona asana this is called mayura asana do all names we are just naming the nature and then so you are to is an old uh, gynecologist they say when you're pregnant you walk uh, if you don't have you sit on your feet like how you sit and walk yes so that will help that will help in fact you come to karnataka there is a temple called lajja gauramma how do you sit when the baby comes out actually uh, i had some photos now i don't have my phone exactly in fact uh, I, I, you need a small uh, um, stone just sit and open your legs like this and hold the knees and the baby comes out you don't need anyone actually you, you it is scrap sculptured in a stone in karnataka in one temple it is a big thing you can see it's and it is called lajje gauri means lajje means um, what is shy but then they were I mean, there is they are showing without lajje you can see this is how you should train yourself if you are going to give birth to baby practice that you are sitting and doing pooja and now you are lying making the lady lie and then say push 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 what what you are pushing pushing against the gravity what are you talking and this is science for you this is the multi speciality hospitals what you have to do actually very simple you tie a rope or a your sari hold that and sit like that the baby comes out and that is scientific way of delivering the baby no no we want cesarean babies this is the problem see lot of things have changed let's think rethink do things properly and uh, see sadly we have all the knowledge in our country in other countries there is no knowledge see i am not speaking anything new i am only trying now i am the f- uh, many people ask me what is the reference i am the first one <laughs> i am the reference how can i have a re- no one has bothered about to talk about fox tail millet or cordo millet or where is show me scientific where is the scientific the scientific fellows are not telling the real science how, can, how they will not write when i say i have cured diabetes hey what are you talking nonsense diabetes incurable so where is the question of my curing they have declared it is incurable so where is the reference i am the first one i am the reference i am the standard you just try i am asking you to try for 6 months and then come back to me whether you have hiv whether you have sle whether you have cancer and we have the protocols and try that simple and believe me lakhs of people have been healing themselves and many people say can you give appointment how do you take a no need of appointments do you really need appointments you don't need me what you need is the grains the oils and we also have got this charcoal powder activated so how to clean your tooth how to take care of your hair everything is there i mean morning to evening what all things should go into your mouth how they should go what is the material what is the raw material what is the sustainable way of doing it without hurting the nature not only billion people 2 billion 3 billion even 70 billion people can live on this planet if we only follow this sustainable way of living that's why i keep telling people this is not diet 
I'm not giving you a diet plan for cancer, diet plan for diabetes, diet plan for... No, 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 please. This is way of living. I'm actually trying to communicate to you how to shit, how to sit also. So, this is what we are trying to communicate to people. Last 15-20 years we have been doing that. Uh, in the last 3-4 years my daughter also has joined uh, the... and no one else has joined. Other than some volunteers like this. All over the world a lot of volunteers are doing the job. I don't have anything. In fact, I don't even know these websites. I, I cannot open the website and I have no time. But information is there. A lot of good people are working and I want to take this to all the human beings on this planet because only this is the right path for future generations to live on this planet. We cannot go on killing all the animals on this planet and say we are civilized societies. Okay, you can kill yourself and you can kill other human beings. Okay, I have no problem with that. But you cannot kill other animals. They have right to live too. I have fought with you, I will kill whatever. No, you can fought with you, you kill me. It's okay. Because among the species, a cat fights with other male cat for a female. So we have some other problem. I want real estate. I want this. We'll fight and we'll kill each other. It's okay. I'm not saying go and kill, but it's okay that kind of killing. But not killing other things because we want to eat. That's not fair. We want to make other living things because we are impregnated with consciousness by God. So we should be caretakers of other things on this planet. Instead, we are actually becoming murderers of all the other living things on this planet. So the civilized society is not civilized anymore. It's not civilized at all, actually. We are killing the planet by our food and food practices. So let's change and health is only a benefit for you. That's not at all a difficult thing, but we are struggling with our health because we are doing things wrongly. And doctors, these hospitals, these scientists are not going to give you health. I'm sorry to say this, but I have no other way of putting it across to you. So we need to think differently. We need to think radically differently. And all these misconceptions about health provided by this present day science is absolutely bogus things. So unless you nurture yourself into the nature, you cannot be healthy. So you need to bend your body, work, sweat. Many people ask me, how much water should I drink? How do I know? <laughs> I know how much water I should drink because I walk two hours, my body tells drink this much I drink. So how do I know about your body? You walk, you work, you will know. But then this nutrition is, oh, drink morning one liter, afternoon two liters, uh, totally six liters. What nonsense is this? You have to drink water because we are made of water, 75%. But how much to drink? The regulation has to happen naturally. So how much to eat? It will regulate. Generally, two fistfuls are good enough for your food, these grains. And half fistful of dals, that uh, lentils or whatever you call. So all this actually is written in your, in your, your hand. So you eat with your fist. I eat with my fist. You eat with your fist. So in the house, how much should we cook? All five people who live in the house should take your fist, your fist and then that is your food. So that will be enough for you. Understand? So all these things are simple according to me and we have been practicing and uh, we have been very happy and healthy. Last, I am 62 years old now. 
I have been like this. Of course, I am eating these grains in the last 10 years because they were not there before. So I had to come, do experiments, grow them, catch them from the farmers, old farmers, get one fistful and then grow more and then give to farmers, make it happen. And now, you know, it's, it's a full lifetime work that now the Karnataka is growing a lot of them and things like that. I had to literally go to their houses, live in their huts, teach them how to grow and all that. You know, it's a huge amount of work that has gone in in the last 15-20 years. Otherwise, I am sure these grains have been totally uh, disappeared even from our uh, country. Uh, if I were not to come back 25 years ago and start doing these things. And that's how we have lost many wonderful things on this planet. Extinct, actually. Totally extinct. Many, many fauna and flora I have lost because of this modern day practices. So we all need to get back and nurture the nature so that we all are going to be well taken care of by the plants and the materials that they can give us. And each and every plant has medicinal property. So if and when you fall sick, you have decoctions to come out. So any sickness, any fever you have, very simple. Parijata, Tulasi, Papaya. These three leaves, you take every one hour decoction. Papaya, Parijata, Tulasi. After three hours, again you take three more times. So in a day, you take nine times. All the three decoctions, three times each. Within two days, whatever fever it is, corona, purona, all kind, everything will fall in place. Nothing to worry. So if you have got fever, first thing you do is this. Whatever fever it is, malaria, this, yeah, all it. It will start settling down. You will... Parijata, Tulasi, Papai. Leaves. Yeah, leaves, decoction. How to make decoction, everything is given. And I believe Sarla is uh, conducting a three-day course in February. February 28th. Ah, that is fixed. So, Bombay. Can we register for that? Yeah. Yeah, she, he will present to you the information. I am just winding up. So, this decoction has to be had uh, one leaf at a time? No, three to four leaves. Yeah, one at a time. Yeah, Parijata, say 8 a.m. 9 a.m. Tulsi. 10 a.m. that. And then again leave three hours gap. Again say 1, 2, 3. And how much water? You don't need to take Which one? Medicine. Yeah, yeah, medicines will not help you. Crossing, what will it do? It will suppress your temperature. That's all. And how much water for three? Everything is uh, completely there. How to cook, how to make, very detailed information is there. Okay, I mean measures, everything is given. And you can use little palm jaggery if you cannot. Uh, some leaf decoctions are bitter, some are sour, some are tangy, some are very different taste. In fact, I love it. it without palm jaggery, you cool it warm decoctions they are very tasty each one is different you start enjoying them actually hmm? Hmm. and it's very good if i get up in the morning all around my house i have around 60 kinds of leaves 60 different leaves so each day actually uh, my wife and i am confused and we keep fighting i want that today i want this today i want that today <laughs> so um there is no favorite. You start liking most of it. In fact, we have sandalwood tree also in my house. So sandalwood leaves are wonderful for kids. Their um, stubbornness, all those things disappear. If you give curry leaves are also like that. Banana, if you have grown them without chemicals, not for liquor, you know, all these bananas they are growing, you spraying all this. So grow one banana, two bananas in your backyard that banana and you know just cut it into pieces with the peel right. boil it fruit yeah banana even we even without it being fruit even the raw banana is also okay sambar banana just boil it for 5 10 minutes leaves 3 4 minutes enough but fruit this big thing you may need to boil for a little more time and then 
keep the lid closed and then filter and drink your mental disorders like you are depressed and uh, you are not happy you are sad all such times you drink banana curry leaves and uh, that shri gandha i told you sandalwood leaves this uh, elevate your moods just you become pleasant and happy uh, so all these wonderful things actually i am not i mean i am angry all right I and mean, i have to say something you know i am angry but then i am not really angry i mean things have happened let's correct ourselves that's all actually so that is the uh, that is the tone and that is the way we can move forward you know we cannot go on making mistakes again same mistake again same mistake so let's all work together to create a better future for our younger generations so my question is uh, you talked about herbicides and how they kill uh, certain plants to grow one particular plant and that is soya bean now um, i'm actually coming from a vegan fest yeah now. yeah yeah i came to straight here about that and in vegan uh, diets they promote lot of soya bean like tofu soya yeah they, they they do not know Good to have no, absolutely because, not good. Also, the argument what we hear because milk industry doesn't want soya bean to happen. Uh, no, 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 no. It's not soya bean. You have different kinds of milks. Mm -hmm. See, you go to America, you have pine nuts. Yeah. Actually, the whole America and further, they can give pine milk, pine nut milk for all the babies. Just like we have coconuts. You know, that's see. It is the logic. Ecologically, is what grows. <coughs> easily just like that and it can feed hundreds thousands lakhs of people that is what is the logic i don't recommend soya bean at all be keeping it one mile away from your place it is the worst thing that you can do is to take soya bean but this vegan fellows do not know they do not know how it is produced and another problem Chicken yeah, yeah. Like yeah, yeah. See, that's that's nonsense. You don't want to be still eating chicken. You eat the right thing, and why do you want to call it chicken? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, nonsense it is. This vegan fellows is a different uh, proposition. They don't want to use meat and meat products, including the curds. See, milk is non-vegetarian. Fermented milk is not non-vegetarian. See, I die. I put in the soil. I become a plant. so it is the microbial fermentations that make the cross so in our tummy the microbes are actually making the plant material into meat material am i right yes so you should not have and actually that is what our uh, guru nanak sahab called lacto vegetarian guru nanak sahab says lassi is okay milk is not okay my daughter will be happy absolutely that is what it is so lacto vegetarianism is actually a vegetarian product milk is non vegetarian lassi or curds is yeah because lassi they add lot of sugar that's not right that's a separate issue <laughs> yeah curd is okay buttermilk huh buttermilk buttermilk is the best actually because curd you cannot get yeah any milk is but make it ferment yeah ferment i'm not saying you should have curds yeah it's fermented yeah fermented but not the ghee in your bottles they are selling you have to make yourself having in south sort of fermented food like you know and everything but rice is used in that so is it the white rice which is wrong or is it the traditional brown rice can be eaten like in south they have no all rice is wrong in traditionally south india we were using all these grains In, there was no rice the red rice in yeah, red rice brown rice all these things have come up in the last 50 to 80 years only okay so you just have to substitute the rice with this rice that's and what about this khapi wheat and all these gluten free there is no gluten free wheat <laughs> wheat means gluten period first of all wheat is not good just forget it just don't even yeah all nonsense all nonsense these five grains and if you are interested in neutral millets ragi jowar first first train yourself then it becomes easy ragi and 
ragi, jowar, all these are neutral millets. Once you are healthy, out of all the diseases, once in a while you can eat ragi, jowar, yeah. Because these are the real health givers. Why do you want not to eat the real thing? What about cereals? All cereals. Madam? Cereals. Cereals. Uh, all are made with wheat or this, so don't touch them. Corn and all that, you know. Yeah. You don't want that. You can eat fruits and vegetables. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All vegetables, fruits, without chemicals. Mangoes are deadly. Yeah, they are all spraying so. Oh, pulses. Pulses, one fistful, no problem. Yeah. No. Dry fruits, please don't touch. They are all processed and lot of chemicals. One, one at a time. Yeah, one at a time. Let all listen to the question and answer. Thank you very much for this enriching experience. I was just mad about what he said. We were we laughing at all that you have been looking across and to feel your presence is a totally different thing. Uh, just wanted to ask you, as you were saying, mentioning in the lecture, that uh, the health facilities, they play upon your fear as well. Yes. So they say you are a senior citizen. Yes. So you are above 65. So you should go in for this health checkup. Because many of the diseases are asymptomatic. Yeah, yeah. That the Indians are—they are not—they are not—they uh, are, not, uh, are not susceptible to this preventive uh, method. They want to go. You get a heart attack, then you go into the ICU. So, what is your opinion about that? That's all MBA talk. <laughs> MBA, Master of Business. <laughs> See, I am 62. I have not gone to doctor even once and I don't think and I will not intend to do so. As long as you are practicing the good habits and good food, you don't need anyone. And that's the way you should live. Okay, I die. I die once. Period. <laughs> what is there? No need at all. Absolutely no need. Sir, dipping fruits and vegetables for 15 20 minutes in baking soda or they say aloes, will it release it of those? You have natural material called tamarind. Tamarind? Tamarind juice does the same job. So you dip it in? Yeah, I dip it in that for 15 All that is there in the information. Hey guys, you need to stop. You need to stop. We have to listen to the question and. I'm actually doing a work in one organization in South Asia. There are a lot of people around here. Most of the 90% of the population is South Asia. Yep. So, is there any like on mass scale? Yeah. Is there anything on? Yeah, you go through the protocol. You can see blood related protocol. It can be used on mass scale. Okay. Yeah. In fact, uh, we have um, HIV also. Few, uh, 20, 30 people followed this and almost they are out of the troubles and they are not going to doctors anymore and things like that. So, so like they are like, uh, how to encourage them for the farming and uh, like they are most of the rice uh, crop is like. Yeah, yeah, you got to get them out of rice eating. If, as long as they are eating rice, no disease will go from your body. Yeah, that is for sure. Yeah, in many organizations can take up this food and actually help lot of different kinds of groups of sick people on this planet. Yeah, I am hoping some groups come up, come forward and start doing these things because it's very easy. Just make the ambali and feed them for three weeks. You will see the difference. Okay. These farmers are very, really, you know, we are uh, fruitarians basically. So, would you advise uh, fruits? Uh, yeah, fruits. There is a problem with fruits because we cannot produce enough for the whole human race. See, if we become fruitarians, it, it's more difficult than producing the food now. It's very difficult because how many fruits you need, you know that? Yeah, I know there is a particular doctor saying you eat fruits, you... Yeah, you may cure one or two, three diseases. 
but that's not going to be a sustainable way of living fruits cannot cure all the diseases also some diabetes or some two three diseases you can cure but then it cannot cure dmd you recommend uh, organic food of course of course everyone thing but pure organic food you are saying i will grow rice in organic way and eat nothing is going to happen to you <laughs> if you eat rice organically grown or wheat organically grown or sugar cane organically grown no disease is going to go away no disease is going to go away so organic food is a must but what is the food you have to define so only this positive grains friend there may be another five grains we have to do more research to bring this five grains it took me 15 years so another five grain means another 10 years at least though the methodology is now clearly worked out by me even to bring out one more grain you do need two three years to pipeline you know you have to give to the patients collect the data see that they are all right lot of diseases are completely being wiped out from the body all those data collection and i have done single handedly in my clinic for the last 15 20 years of course my daughter has joined recently in last 3 4 years but then the individual doctors scientists have to take upon themselves and then start doing things yeah so uh, we both are doctors yes when ms session was yes sir. she is an ayurvedic doctor and we are into the basically vegan for last two years yeah and we are interested in spreading this message yeah vegan uh, please don't uh, mistake me this uh, soya bean and then dry fruits are all not right because so, i think so i'm trying to gather knowledge yes. from various sources absolutely sir yeah, absolutely absolutely so i am also a vegan uh, to tell you frankly yes. but yeah. yeah but lacto vegetarianism is okay according to me by natural principles because that's how a non veg becomes veg and veg becomes non veg it is through microbes that we have this link because i am a microbiology scientist i mean i have done lot of different kinds of microbiological experiments i have cleaned up dioxin i have worked out in the plant physiology animal physiology lot of things i have done so without microbes there is no life on this planet and we are killing them and that is the biggest mistake human being is doing both on the field and the in our tummy and the doctors are doing the biggest mistake in fact the most unscientific thing a can, person can do is give an antibiotic see that is actually produced very rare when when it almost is going to about to die it's an icu business which they have made a daily business and that is the sad thing so no one should be given antibiotic because the bugs are going to become super bugs in no time in 5 to 8 generations they beat your antibiotics and that's how your list of 150 antibiotics now am i right and that itself should show us the way that we should not be doing that we should find some other path and i i worked in so called um, pharmaceutical industry i was in dupont cr and d so i know what i'm talking um i know how a drug is discovered all this uh, fda usda i have gone through all those um uh, so milk, milk you can consider as a liquid basically absolutely you are right yeah. Abs- so mean, no milk buttermilk is okay that is technically so that is my question so why buttermilk because the fermentation because there will be still be hormones and everything no no hormones all will disappear because lactobacillus fermentation gets you into a phase where there is no such chemicals left absolutely any milk any milk. any milk is not good yeah nowadays now our uh, desi cow is good and jersey cow is bad no only difference is you have more hormones here you have little less hormones both are same the na- amount is less and uh, yeah the chemicals may be little less and but here you have so there no paneer right ah no paneer paneer is more dangerous than milk milk you have to take 10 liters now you eat 1 kilo paneer you are consuming that amount of stuff so what about ghee ghee is okay it is fermented it comes from what yeah it is a fermented product if you do it in your house with your hands don't buy 
some organic ghee, this ghee, all nonsense. I, I don't trust. Yeah, you make yourself. Yes. Idli, dosa, pulka, everything you can make. No rice. You are from Tamil Nadu? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I am. Yeah, yeah, that's what I warned people one on one. To the site, I can have a dialogue to that. Uh... No, I don't think there is a dialogue. You can lodge your question, yeah. uh, you will get the answer back, not a dialogue wise. Somehow or the other, you will get the answer. They will get back to me and then they will answer. I don't see any website and you know, I hardly get time. Now I have to travel and you know, again, I have hundreds of patients waiting. So it's, it's a huge vicious cycle for me, which I have wrought upon myself. So. <laughs> Your experience is very nice. Thank you, sir. Thank you. But to implement. Yes. There should be some support base so that I can convince my family members. Yes, yeah. this is like that. Yeah, so information. Yeah, yeah, and we have a lot of information. Yeah, so many information we have given. Yes, sir. What are the things happening which is done by the doctors and research people, which is not actually scientific. Yes. Why can't through your movement, through the World Health Organization, all the government of India, giving all the details, what the facts are, that's what no sir I, I personally don't believe so I personally believe governments all over the world are working for corporates so we ourselves can ah that's it that's the point and actually that I want that answer coming from your mouth you, you are responsible not governments see you can control your kitchen what goes into your mouth, you control. I change myself. Absolutely. My family. Absolutely. But we have to help yes. people like she said. Yes. The downtrodden people. We help ourselves. We help the downtrodden. Yeah. That's what I have been doing for the last 20 years. That we need some assistance. Yes. Because you have knowledge. I am, I am willing to share it free. I am actually going out of my way. In fact, I spent all the money that I have uh, earned to go to different villages and only now the Surya is paying me some money to come here and go. So I will take his assistance. Yeah. <laughs> I think I should get some inspiration. Yes. So I will get support. Yes. That sir. is guaranteed. Uh, sure, sure. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Huh? Karmas, karmas, that is the karmas. first milk of the first milk of the ah, that is your mother's milk. <laughs> Not, the Not the cow's cow's milk. First milk is for that baby. Sochaniya sthiti hai. Copper? Copper pot? Yeah, but cleaning copper pot is more difficult than cleaning this rod. It's very easy to clean this. Just take a lemon, uh, cut lemon and you can clean. With the copper pot, you know, people tend to not clean for two days, three days. I have seen this practically. Yeah, this is easy yeah, to yeah. No problem. Yeah, every day you have to clean. Second and uh, second yeah, yeah, everything is there. Yeah. Cheese can be eaten by kids. Very much. One, one. Can I request my grandmother? She is six years. And uh, she was uh, diagnosed with uh, hypothyroidism. Uh, with the medicine, it gave it control in three months. But uh, still, she has to take the medicine daily. Yeah, yeah, for lifelong she has to take. So you can come out of it, follow the protocol. Yeah, yeah, you can start for anyone, no problem. Doctor, but depression also there is protocol. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah. I told you, explained to you. Ba banana, turmeric, all those kashayams and codomillet. In the interest of a time, we would like to 
end session over here. Sir will be around for another 10 minutes till the time we are winding up. If you have any more questions, you can reach out to us. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, and still you have some things that you are not finding. Surya will explain to you. There is a column where you can write your question. It will find me. I will answer and you will get back your answers. Thank you so much for your time listening. And uh, I appreciate uh, Surya and the team, Archana, Bali. They have been... Uh, Actually, because of them, I am coming here and uh, so I thank um, the team of uh, Surya and his friends Archana and Bali and uh, it's, been, it's been pleasure. Thank you. Namaskar. Namaskar.